Hello everyone, my name is Brennan Marr. That noise you're hearing is my ventilator. And welcome to Page Turners They Were Not, my Star Wars podcast. Today I would like to talk about the career of one George Walton Lucas Jr. before Star Wars. Yes, though Star Wars came to overshadow and dominate his entire career. George Lucas made two theatrical films prior to the release of Star Wars that I think are both brilliant and deserve a little bit more attention, though I'm glad to see that people are interested in his other work. So let us cast our minds back to the year 1967. George Lucas, a student at the University of Southern California, at that time made a student film with the strange title of Electronic Labyrinth THX 1138 4EB, often just called THX 1138. George Lucas, while spending time as a student, was also a TA, or teacher's assistant, in a U.S. Navy film class. At that time, and since the 1940s, the University of Southern California Film School had an arrangement with the U.S. Navy where Navy filmmakers would attend USC for additional study. But it was an intriguing class to young George Lucas because the class's Navy connections paid for unlimited color film and lab processing costs. Therefore, George Lucas decided to take a position as a TA in the class in order to gain access to these perks. Using the students in the class, he filmed his 15-minute short film, THX 1138, which is about a man escaping from a dystopian society. And more or less is a chase film. Now it's brilliantly done because it's done in a way that you, the audience, are feel like you are watching the movie through surveillance cameras. It is filmed in such a way that every shot is designed to look as though you are looking through a surveillance camera placed in many locations around this dystopian society and are watching this man escape. And with the use of some extremely haunting organ music, including uh, Tosselia in C minor from Bach, Pasacalia, I should say, you get this extremely haunting Big Brother voyeur effect, and you are becoming a voyeur in this film. As you are almost participating with the uh, police state in watching this man run away. Uh, the film is, you can see it in its entirety on YouTube. It's about 15 minutes long, and it is marvelous to me, I think. But now we come to what's even more important about the film. Its reception. It was extremely well received by the various boards judging student films. It won first prize in the category of dramatic films 
at the National Student Film Center in Lincoln in Lincoln Center in New York. Who well, oddly enough, where it was seen by a young Steven Spielberg. And came to the attention of several prominent people, including Ned Tannen, who was the Universal Studios production executive. We'll come to him later. But also as a result of the success of THX, George Lucas received a scholarship to work as an intern at Warner Brothers, the Warner Brothers studio in LA. The LA area, I should say. Well there, at the at the time, Warner Brothers was going through kind of a slump. They had basically just shut down their animation department. That meant shutting down Looney Tunes. And that was something that had interested Lucas, as he'd been always always been interested in animation. With very little to do there on the Warner Brothers lot, Lucas's friend, who we had gone to school with, producer Howard Kazanjian, who, by the way, was one of the producers of Return of the Jedi, called Lucas and said, My friend, Francis Ford Coppola, is currently making a movie called Finian's Rainbow for Warner Brothers. Why don't you come over and meet him? As you can imagine, the rest was history. George Lucas went to meet Coppola, who was making Finian's Rainbow, which was the only film being in production at the time, a musical starring Fred Astaire. And George Lucas and Francis Ford Coppola met for the first time, and the rest was history. So George Lucas went from being just a person who had met Coppola to being his assistant, or as Coppola would insist, his associate. And Coppola's next film, after Finian's Rainbow, a movie called The Rain People, George Lucas filmed a behind-the-scenes documentary, which is also a uh, which is also available on YouTube. It's called Filmmaker, a diary by George Lucas, where it films a lot of the behind the scenes of the making of the Rain People. Afterwards, George Lucas and Francis Ford Coppola decided to found a movie production company, which they entitled American Zoetrope. American Zoetrope had a slate of about seven movies that they were planning on making. Most of which were made, including such movies as Apocalypse Now and other various films. But one of the films that they desired to make was a feature length version of THX 1138 directed by George Lucas. The film was released in 1971 and takes the idea of a man escaping a dystopian society and kind of gives us the reasons why. The movie, interestingly enough, was filmed in the Bay Area in such locations as the unfinished Mart tunnels. Mart is the public transit. Also in the Marin County Civic Center, which I had been to in San Rafael, California. What a what a building that is, I, I gotta tell you. It's a very otherworldly experience being there because it's like no other architecture that I can think of. It was designed by the great Frank Lloyd Wright, who was big on kind of that Art Deco style. It's quite a sight. I'd say uh, 
If you get a chance, check out the Green County Civic Center. So, basically, THX 1138, which is the title of the feature film, not Electronic Labyrinth THX 1138, but just THX 1138, which, to be clear, is the name of the main character. Or designation, as they don't really have names. The film, unfortunately, did not do well. And did not impress the executives who had forked over the money. And the film, unfortunately, failed at the box office and critically was uh, none too well received. However, the film was selected to be shown at the director's fortnight at the Cannes Film Festival. Now this was important because on the way to Cannes, George Lucas and his wife stayed at the home of Francis Ford Coppola in New York City. During their time in New York, George Lucas made a phone call. Well, my mistake, actually met with an executive for uh, Columbia, I believe, who was interested in George Lucas's career. Or rather, George Lucas persuaded him to consider his next film. George Lucas decided to go with something a little more lighthearted. And in this case, the idea was the movie American Graffiti. American Graffiti is a coming-of-age comedy about four small-town kids kind of having a last night on the town before some of them are supposed to head off to college. This film is quite marvelous in its great use of visuals and music and is a much more light-hearted look at sort of the last hurrah of the 50s. The movie was released in 1973, but was set um, in 1962, and is meant to be a throwback to the quote-unquote good old days of the 50s. The great American love scene, as George Lucas calls it, which is guys with cool cars picking up girls. The movie was filmed in Petaluma, which is a city in the Northern Bay Area. And is just a straightforward, simple teen film with, I think, there's a little bit more depth there. But it's more lighthearted, and it's definitely a movie I would recommend. THX Element 38 is a rather depressing, kind of bleak movie. I would recommend it if you are interested in that kind of film. But American Graffiti, I would recommend if you're looking for something a little bit more uh, lighthearted and not so hard to grasp. Great use of old music, by the way. A lot of the same music that you might hear in uh, Happy Days. In fact, people have made comparisons between American Graffiti and Happy Days. Also because they both star Ron Howard. Oddly enough. These films, together with Star Wars, represent very American stories, which are about people escaping from monotony to a life of something more significant. Definitely a signature of American film. 
and George Lucas's three films are milestones of the 70s, which is a great time for American cinema. Now, American Graffiti was extremely successful. He was stuck in limbo for a little while because Ned Tannen, the executive at Universal, was not particularly pleased with the film. Even though he was in attendance with an audience that loved it when they first showed it. But he was a little bit wary of, of allowing them to have a wide release uh, to releasing the film. But then it was the success of Francis Ford Coppola, who was the producer of the film. After The Godfather won Best Picture that year at the Academy Awards, this was able to give Coppola enough impetus to push Tannen into releasing the movie. And thank goodness, the movie went on to be a huge hit that year, making a lot of money on a very, very small budget. I ended up being nominated for Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Original Screenplay. And the rest, as they say, is history. So those are my thoughts. That's a little bit of the history of the films of George Lucas. I would definitely recommend checking out the THX short film, which is on YouTube. Checking out THX 1138, the feature film, if you're interested in that kind of story. And definitely checking out American Graffiti, a true American classic. My name is Brendan Barr, and that noise here is my metal anchor. And thank you for tuning in to Page Turners They Were Not, my Star Wars podcast. May the Force be with you.